Hello, welcome to Makeup and Monarchies. I am your host, Tiffany Davidson. I am a, if you're new here, I'm a makeup artist, I'm a cosmetologist, and a lover of UK medieval history. So this week, we're starting a series, and we're going to start with Henry VIII. And we're going to kind of jump back and forth between Henry and his wives so we don't get lost and we're kind of following it in chronological order. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do. It really helps me. Um, I'm trying to grow here on YouTube and your subscriptions help. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can go ahead and do that now. I'll wait. And then you can ring the bell so you're notified about all my videos that I post. Usually we post one a week, or I post one a week on Tuesdays at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, you can also find me in TikTok, on TikTok and on Instagram under the same name, at Makeup and Monarchies. That's about it. With that being said, let's get into it. Hello. So today, we're going to start by putting my hair up because it's really driving me crazy today. And... Crack this bitch open. Not sponsored, not gifted. Picked it up. It's delish. Okay, so we're going to start with Henry was born on June 28th of 1491 at the Palace of Placentia in Greenwich. Henry was the third child to Henry VII and Queen Elizabeth of York. He had two older siblings, Arthur and Margaret. He then eventually had a younger sister named Mary. He received his titles of Constable of Dover Castle and Lord Warden of the Sink Ports when he was about two. Henry received a first class, first rate education from top educators. Since he was a prince, he was fluent in Latin and French, and he learned some Italian. Not a whole lot is known about his youth because he wasn't supposed to become king. It is known, however, that his father was good to him by showering the kids with quality clothing, and other gifts quite often. So Henry's older brother, Prince Arthur, married Catherine of Aragon in 1501. Henry was about 10 at this point. Henry played a big role in the wedding. Because he was Duke of York, Henry used the arms of his father and Henry was only 10 at the time. The following April, Arthur died of sweating sickness. He was only 15. And Henry Henry was now in the limelight to his, his become because he was heir now to his father. And Henry the Seventh gave little Henry very few responsibilities, but was strictly supervised. And he didn't appear in public because of this. He came to the throne untrained in the exacting art of kingship. Tragedy struck again in February of 1503. Henry's mother. Queen Elizabeth had given birth to her last child, a baby girl named Catherine at Tower of London. The baby died a few days after her birth. Elizabeth became very ill with childbed fever, which is a postnatal infection. And she died on her 37th birthday, February 11th of 1503. Now, this had been a pretty tight knit family. Elizabeth was very involved with their the children's lives and there seemed to be a lot of love between them all. Henry was only 11 at the time of her death and it seems as though this may have started or this may have stunted him emotionally. The evidence that's available my drawers. The evidence that's available, it shows that Prince Henry was very close to his mother. I tend to think this was, he was brought up mostly in a female household, which was unusual at the time. And I tend to think that this was a choice by Elizabeth 
to mirror how she and her siblings were raised, except her younger bro- one of her younger brothers, Edward, who went on to be Edward V. He was raised at Ludlow. Henry's handwriting was similar to Elizabeth, so this suggests that he was what we would now refer to as a mama's boy, and I think that this event really rocked him and set the precedent for the rest of his life. Henry was still trying to keep the marriage, or Henry the Seventh was re- trying to keep the marriage alliance between England and Spain intact. Uh, so he offered little Henry to marry the now widowed Catherine of Aragon. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella agreed, and a treaty was signed on June 23rd of 1503 for their marriage, and they became betrothed two days later. Now, this gets a little tricky. A papal dispensation was needed for the impediment of public honesty if Catherine's previous marriage had not been consummated. Catherine claimed it wasn't, but King Henry and the Spanish ambassador went for a dispensation on affinity or for affinity, which covered the possibility of consummation. Henry and Catherine, little Henry and Catherine, claimed Henry and little Henry and Catherine didn't live together because Henry was too young and her mother's death the following year complicated things, mainly the problem being the succession of Castile. King Ferdinand wanted Catherine to stay in England, but King Henry's relations with him had fizzled. Because of this, Catherine was left in limbo for years and Prince Henry rejected the marriage as soon as he could at the age of 14. Ferdinand made her the Spanish ambassador, which which allowed her to stay in England. Being as pious as she was, she started to believe it was God's will that she marry he- Prince Henry, even though he didn't agree. Henry was honored on February 9th of 1506 by the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I and was get made Knight of the Golden Fleece. Henry VII died on April 21st. I don't know what it is about April, but the two, or Edward the Fourth died in April too. It's weird. Uh, so he only he left his only surviving son, a now seventeen year old Henry, as king. Shortly after his father's funeral and interment alongside his mother at Westminster, he declared he'd marry Catherine out of nowhere. So I don't know if he felt like he had to or like it would help him like become king or more, I don't know like a better king because he had an intended even though there were several issues that weren't resolved including the papal dispensation and a missing part of the dowry Henry said it had been his da- father's dying wish for him to marry Catherine Emperor Maximilian the first had been trying to marry his granddaughter Eleanor of Castile who happened to be Catherine's niece to Henry Henry and Catherine had a small marriage ceremony at Friars Church in Greenwich on June 11th of 1509 On June 24th, Henry and Catherine attended their coronation at Westminster Abbey. It was a lavish coronation with the king's passage lined with tapestries and fine cloth. After the ceremony, there was a banquet at Westminster Hall. Catherine had written to her father saying, our time is spent in continuous festival. June 26th, Henry had two of his father's unpopular ministers arrested for high treason. Richard Epson and Edmund Dudley were executed in 1510 and were the first of Henry's political, politically motivated executions that would continue through his reign. His dealings with the House of York was far more lame in comparison to, oh shit, sorry, far more lame in comparison to his father's. Thomas Gray, this was Henry's uncle, through his grandmother, Elizabeth Woodville, her first marriage, had been imprisoned under Henry VII. The now king had him pardoned. However, Edmund de la Pole was beheaded in 1513 after his brother sided against Henry. Catherine became pregnant and gave birth to a stillborn girl 
on January 31st of 1510. Roughly four months later, she was pregnant again. And on January 1st of 1511, she gave birth to a baby boy named Henry. Parties were held in ha- in honor of the little prince's birth, including a joust known as the Westminster Tournament. But poor little Henry died seven weeks after, leaving both his parents completely devastated. Thomas Wolsey was a cardinal of the church for f- from 1514 until his death in 1529. He saw domestic and foreign policy for Henry as Lord Chancellor. Henry had renewed his father's relations with King Louis the 11th of or I'm sorry, King Louis the 12th of France. This wasn't well received by his council. He signed a pact with his father-in-law Ferdinand and joined the new Holy League, which was anti-France. There was an attack plan on Aquitaine to recover it for England, but it wasn't led by Henry. It was considered a failure, and Ferdinand used it for his own gains, and this strained the relationship between England, or the relationship England had with France. Henry ended up convincing Maximilian to join his new whole, this new Holy League and was promised the title of Most Christian King of France from Pope Julius if Louis could be defeated. Henry invaded France on June 30th of 1513 and defeated the French army at the Battle of the Spurs. After this, England took Thorain, you know how I am with pronunciation, and gave it to Maximilian, then took Tournai because he was gone from England at the time. His brother-in-law, James IV of Scotland, which we talked invaded England on behalf of Louis. So Queen Catherine oversaw the army and defeated Scotland at the Battle of Flodden on September 9th of 1513. Now, she did not fight pregnant. I understand that makes for great TV and the triumphant woman. I get it, I'm here for it. Fiction, not real. She did not fight pregnant. She just oversaw the army. James IV died in battle, leaving Henry's older sister, a widow, with a young child. Catherine gave birth to two more stillborn sons, one in 1513 and one in 1515. Finally, on February 18th of 1516, Catherine gave birth to a baby girl and her name was Mary. Little Mary came into the world and eased the strained marriage that was going on between her parents. England, France, Spain, and the Holy um, Roman Empire ended up signing a mutual defense agreement. Sir Thomas More comes into the picture, and he is invited to join the King's Council because of his work within the city of London. Thomas has been had been part of Parliament under Henry VII and fought how much the King requested to give as a dowry for his daughter to Scotland. Now, Henry did have mistresses. This is a well-known fact. He had been having an affair with either Elizabeth or Anne Hay both sisters to Edward Stafford, third Duke of Buckingham. The one he's probably most known for or notorious for is the affair with Elizabeth Blount. That affair went on for three years. However, in 1518, Catherine became pregnant again and had another stillborn girl. Following year, Bessie Blount, or Elizabeth Blount, gave birth to Henry's first illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy. This made him Duke of Richmond, in, or he made him Duke of Richmond in 1525. Because of this, it is thought that this would eventually lead him to become legitimized, but he died in 1536 at the age of 17. He had been married for three years and Parliament was considering a second succession act that would have allowed him to become king. Henry had been supporting Ferdinand and Maximilian financially during the campaigns and it left England's pockets empty. I gotta fix this up. At the time, Pope Leo X 
had replaced Julius and Leo wanted to make peace with France. Henry and Louis signed a separate treaty containing the agreement Henry's youngest sister, Mary, would wed Louis. Within Europe, there had been three accessions of young kings, and it offered a clean slate to all involved. Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, oh, Jack's with us again, made a treaty or made the Treaty of London in 1518. And, and this was to unite Western Europe against the new Ottoman threat. Henry and the new French king, Francis, Francois the first, met at the Field of the Cloth of Gold in Calais for roughly two weeks. It's a little French vacay, as we say here, or a French holiday, as they say over there. I'm just going to go back in with my previous color and just kind of blend this out a little bit. Just soften that edge there we go it wasn't a very friendly meeting uh charles v ended up invading france and henry ended up aligning england with him charles defeated francis and captured him along with his two sons and the two boys francis's two boys were captured for four years henry removed england from this and signed the treaty of the moor on august 30 30th of 1525 so we'll, we're gonna back up a teeny bit from 1525 coming around to 1521 at this point because of his good work with the diplomatic mission to charles v sir thomas moore is knighted by henry and made treasurer of the exchequer now in 1522 in walks Anne Boleyn to court. She had been previously in France and served as a lady in waiting alongside her sister Mary to the Queen of France. Anne has now come to England court to the English court to serve as lady in waiting to Catherine of Aragon. Mary Boleyn had previously had an affair with Henry and could have possibly fathered two children from him, but that was never proven and Henry didn't acknowledge those children the way he did Henry Fitzroy. So Treaty of the Moor renews friendly relations between England and France. Thomas More is then promoted to Lord Chancellor to Henry and stay in this he stays in this position until his downfall in 1532. Really need to do my makeup. This is really lengthy, it's why I'm taking my time. Henry now becomes infatuated with Anne. He attempted to seduce her, but she didn't give in. Anne refused to become his mistress. Mistress Catherine is now around 40 years old and isn't able to produce any more heirs for Henry. So he becomes very desperate and is weighing options. He could either have little Henry legitimize. He could wed his daughter Mary as soon as possible to produce a grandchild as an heir or having his marriage to Catherine dissolved and then he could marry Anne. This becomes what's known as Henry's great matter. I'm just going to jump off real quick and do my liner. I will be right back. So I just did my Vive Modern Concealer and I'm going to mix it with the Skin Dew. Not Skin Dew, Skin Dew. Okay, so... That is probably so fucking loud. I know it's loud for me when I'm editing these. So the great matter is the name that, or is the name of the events that take place of Henry trying to divorce Catherine of Aragon. I say dissolved, but like he was trying to get rid of her. I mean, I don't know how other way to say that. Cause div I, don't, I don't think divorce was big like it is now. People worked it out. They didn't just give up, worked it out, or they were stuck, which happens. So it was in 1527. That looks crazy as shit. Hold on. Okay. So it was in 1527 that he started to get that ball rolling with the help of Wolsey. <laughs> Finally, in the summer of 1529, Henry and Catherine stood before court and pleaded their cases. <sighs> Poor Catherine, right? It's so sad. I think I did use this. This wasn't bad yesterday. I used a foundation brush. Do you want to know why? Because my old as shit sponge gave out on me. I need to go get a new one. That was really sad. Cardinal Wolsey and Cardinal 
Compeggio listened to the testimony. Oh, so let's explain who Compeggio is. So Cardinal Compeggio, Compeggio, Compe yeah, Compeggio. Oh, I just like knocked that into my forehead. That hurt. Cardinal Compeggio was the Pope's representative in England. So he would almost like an ambassador because when you have an ambassador that is like like France had an or Spain had an ambassador in England and if you watch the Tudors didn't you just fucking love him oh, I just loved him he was great he really loved Catherine in the show at least I mean I don't know what it was like in real life I'll find out next week but I loved him in the show he was so good Anyways, after both cardinals heard the testimony, they decided that they that it needed to go to Rome to be decided upon. So, I am like a bull in a china bull in a china shop today. I am so sorry. Also, I crushed this shit up and used as a loose powder. I'm wasting it. <laughs> Just got that way. <laughs> and no. Um, my ass gonna pour. I honestly think that both of these cardinals were like fucking petrified to go against Henry. So it was kind of like, we can't make this determination. You're gonna, it's gonna have to go to Rome. So they kind of like tossed the issue down to, down to Rome. So they didn't have to like deal with Henry's wrath. I get it. So off it went to Rome. Cardinal Wolsey is dismissed from Privy Council at, and and as Lord Chancellor. Ba like reasoning was he failed the king. Oh, I'm like hitting pan on this. I'm just gonna bring this down because it like chisels out my face a little bit more. My chunky face. Yeah, see? Ooh, much better, much better. <coughs> For his failure. So where were we? Wolsey's kicked out because he failed Henry with the great matter. So October of 1529, he is charged for basically going against Henry and siding with the Pope. Um, but the first half of 1530, Wolsey and Henry reconcile and Wolsey is pardoned. However, he was charged for treason in November, dies on the 29th of that month while awaiting trial and from, he just became ill. I know how it's been represented, but I highly doubt that's what happened. Oh, so I did get, so Physician's Formula came out with this. It is a mood changing or mood boosting blush and the color rose. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm hoping, I did swatch it a little bit. I'm hoping it's not that like bubblegum pink, like doll look that's big right now. I, I'm not a big fan, but so yeah, we're gonna try this, see how it does. This is a Sigma brush, it should not be. All right, is it baby doll pink? No, it's not. I mean it is, but I'm literally like just tapping and then putting it on, I just, I'm really nervous to go in, in the swirl. That's, we're good, that is enough. I hate that, like, doll look. Yeah, it's, see if it changes my mood. I doubt it, good luck with that. Let's give it a minute, see if it works. No, I'm still a bitch. It doesn't work. Carrying on. The following year, uh, Catherine of Aragon is banned from court. I feel so bad for her. I really do. She was probably my favorite one. Her and Jane Seymour will get there soon. Soon, not next week. Probably the week after. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. So she is sent... Oh, I thought that was something old. She's sent to live at Kimbleton Castle. Her daughter, Mary, is not allowed to go live with her. Mary's sent off somewhere else. I'm not going to go into that. That is Mary's story, and I feel like part of Catherine's too. So we'll cover that with Catherine. Queen Catherine's room rooms were given to freaking Anne Boleyn. I say freaking. I don't mind her. I think she was dealt a shit hand, but it's neither here nor there. So Anne brought a sense of like intellect and education to work. She also bought, brought the engagement with, oh, she also brought the engagement um, with Protestant reformers. So it's unclear to what extent she was like involved with the Protestant reformers or how, like how much she was committed to 
the faith. Again, let's do the research, people, and not base it off TV shows, even, even though they're fun to watch. I will say. Ooh, what the fuck is that? I will say, Jonathan Rhys Myers and Natalie Dormer. Damn, they were hot. They were so good together. What the fuck is going on with my brow today? Good lord. Good, it doesn't look funny anymore. Some days, man. Bad brow days. So Henry was in need of a new archbishop, and the person needed to support his... He need, the new person needed to be a supporter of the annulment. <laughs> Enter Thomas Cranmer. He is appointed as Henry's chaplain or his personal chaplain. And this came, so Cranmer found out by letter, which was dated October 1st. Oh, that's awful. October 1st of 1532. Uh, while he was like traveling with Charles V, through Italy. Cranmer had seen the effects of the Reformation while in Nuremberg, which was a city, a Lutheran city, um, in what is now known as Germany. Cranmer arrived in England and at the or at the beginning of January of 1533. At the end of the month on either the 24th or 25th, Henry and Anne had secretly married. And they don't tell Cranmer until like two weeks, a fortnight later. So I'd love to have been a fly on the wall for that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hop off. I'm going to do my brows and my lips. I don't know if we're going to do hair today. I'll probably just spray some stuff in it and call it a day. I'll be back with my fun facts. So back fun facts for this week. One, my first one. I just used the House Labs, what the hell is it called? Le Monster Lip Crayon in Rose Matte. And I'm just going to put a little pep in its step with Rosa from Vive. So her fun hack is Henry, when he was younger, enjoyed hunting, hawking, dancing, gambling, and playing cards. That continued through his entire life instead of like his official duties. He wrote a 30,000 response, I'm assuming word, 30,000 word response to Martin Luther's Protestant 95 thesis and praised the church in Rome. I'm just moving my mirror. He was the first king to publish a book and he, w he was declared defender of the faith by the Pope. It didn't, that didn't age well did it and not to sound like Alanis Morissette but isn't it ironic then my last one is he was obsessed with sickness and death probably due to the amount of sickness and death that he experienced in his like first 30 years of life so I think that really carried on through the end of his life that is it for this week so I was gonna do all my episodes on Henry first and then like go through the wives but I think I'm gonna jump so next week we're gonna cover Catherine of Aragon who's a favorite of mine um so yeah that being said I always say that so anyways that's it for this week all the items that I used are listed down below in the description box we're gonna do Catherine I said next week and then the week after that we're gonna go to Henry again I'm gonna gonna I'm going to kind of jump back and forth between Henry and the then the wives just so we don't get lost and it's a little bit easier and more fun and keeps it exciting. So that's it for this episode of Makeup and Monarchies. I'll see you next week. That's it. I have a spot right there. All right. <laughs> I'm going to fix it. Bye.